All right. So I want us to look at a very sensitive subject tonight, but I want to trust the Lord to give me grace for us to deal with it. I want to deal with the spirit of rejection. The spirit of rejection. Hallelujah. I want to take one scripture for the sake of our, of our sermon, then probably I'll make references to the other scriptures. Psalm 118 verse 22. Psalm 118 verse 22. Oh, okay. Amen. Amen. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. All right. Then Psalm 94, verse 14. The other one? Psalm 94, verse 14. Psalm 94, verse 14. Mm -hmm. It says, For the Lord will not cast off his people, nor will he forsake his inheritance. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. And I we thank God for the reading of his word. And I pray for divine intervention in our lives as we go through the sermon. Amen. That the Lord will give us a testimony before we leave you. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want to do a first part of this sermon and a foundational part of the sermon. And um, I pray that we will connect to what the Lord wants to do tonight in Jesus' name. So, the spirit Amen. of rejection. Now, rejection basically means that one, when one turns something down or one refuses to connect with a particular, it could be a um, um, particular organization, it could be a human relationship, or one just refuses to be part of a process or a system deliberately. Now, rejection comes in two dimensions. There are deliberate rejection and they are in deliberate or probably rejection that are not made deliberately so when one goes through this process it has so many things that it comes with now rejection has been one of the major things that happen to a human or to us to us as human beings per the reason or the fact that we go through several things that ends us to be rejected the first thing i want to bring to our notice is that now the first scripture says that the the chief cornerstone was a stone that was rejected by men became the chief cornerstone now contextually was the psalmist writing to tell people how god brings into limelight whatever men don't take into consideration the other way the other one some 94 says that god himself will not reject his people king james but he will save them and give them inheritance so paraphrasing all these scriptures i want to bring the first point Rejection is not an act of total demonic or total refusal. Rejection is not an act of the demons or it's not a total refusal. Now, most of the times, when we go through that phase of rejection, the first thing we are tempted to think about is demonic or probably we are being refused. Now, like I said in my initial statement, they are deliberate rejection, okay? And they are those that are not deliberate. Whatever way it is, we, even we as humans, we have reasons why we don't want to be part of anything we don't want to be. All of us here are things that we will definitely say no to them when they are presented to us. So it is not in itself a thing to consider demonic but it has very many reasons why you need to understand where it's coming from. The first thing you have to understand is that the purposes of God for your life can never be interrupted by the act of man. Hallelujah. Now, Amen. the will of God comes to us in two dimensions. There is the full participation of man when it comes to partnering with the will of God to let there be a manifestation. And there is the sovereignty of God that works in man, that man needs not to be part of it. What I'm saying is that when God's will is working in your life, there are those that God needs you to be part of, and there are those that he doesn't need you to be part of. Hallelujah. So whatever he needs you to be part of, he makes you aware. But the will of God concerning your destiny in the full manifestation, just as he said in Jeremiah 1 5, before you were by the cloud of uh, blood in your mother's womb, I knew you. I ordained you and I made you a prophet. Mm -hmm. 
before that statement came to Jeremiah to confirm his calling and what God has called him to do as an assignment for the nation God was calling him to the Israelites, the Lord said, I knew you. It means that I knew the things you would go through, but I had the conclusion of the matter. Understand that your life in the hands of God, your destiny in the hands of God was concluded before you were born. The Lord knows what Amen. will be the results of your life. Hallelujah. He knows what will be the end product as you walk in his will. Now, number two, to my point, to buttress my point that God's plan for you has been divinely orchestrated or divinely positioned, is that the route to the manifestation of your prophetic word or your destiny is not one route. God cannot rely on one reason or just things that are around you to be the only reason why he will promote your life. By the grace of God and by the power of God, all powers belong to him who created the heavens and the earth. So when he created the heavens and the earth, the Bible says he rules in his kingdom. He's God by himself. And no one comes to, to tell him what to do. In his kingdom, he's the king of kings. He reigns supreme. All powers belong to him. So when it comes to do something in your life, he comes to do it without the permission of men. Hallelujah. God does not need to go Amen. to people to ask permission concerning his purposes of putting you on the pedestal to the fulfillment of your prophecy and your destiny. And I've come to let somebody know that no matter what you go through with the aims of men, it will not stop the works of God to be manifested in your life. Hallelujah. He's all powerful. Amen. God. It's all powerful God. And for most of us here, every one of us here have gone through our waves of rejection in many, many ways. It could be rejection from family, rejection from a spouse, a relationship, rejection from friends, rejection even from church, and rejection from company um, 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 organizations and everything. There are so many things we go through and the pain that comes with rejection sometimes may be misinterpreted and we get to understand or we get to form allies with pain. But I have come to let someone understand that in the hands of God, nothing in the hands of God is destroyed. Hallelujah. Nothing that is in the hands of the Creator can be taken away and be destroyed. Understand that when God sent Jeremiah to the potter's house, he said he found him that was he was working on a clay in his hands, on his wheel. He was working on something. And the Bible says there were broken pots, there were broken clays, there were things that were broken, but the porter was fixing them. I want you to understand this evening, in the name of Jesus, whatever that is broken in your life, by the grace and the mercies of God, will be restored in the name of Jesus. Because he is the God of restoration and it's the God that builds things that has been broken and I pray for you wherever you are at the sound of my voice tonight in this morning the spirit of God will bring healing to you hallelujah rejection can be one of the most painful things that happen to people imagine a, a young guy growing up a kid is growing up he is rejected from his, his parents rejection makes you feel like you are not loved by the people around you it is a clear indication that you are not part of us. It is a clear indication that you are not liked to be part of the whole thing. And most of the times you get the rejection so hard on your face. Sometimes it makes you think if you're a human being. There are many of us who have gone through rejection of all kinds of sorts. That makes you think like you cannot good enough for even your own life. But I want you to understand that in the hands of God, in the hands of God, nothing can be taken out of his hands. People will reject you based on their own reasons. People will reject you based on their own assumption, their own interpretations, and their own policies. But in the hands of God, your destiny is on the pedestal of fulfillment. You will fulfill every spoken word of God concerning your life, business, marriage, health, in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever you are. Hallelujah. Now, let's take note of these three points and we'll move to the next one. 
people reject things because of their own reasons hallelujah now let us be very fair to men when they put up the, the signpost of rejection now sometimes you realize that people are quick to reject things because of their experience in the past some people have had bad experiences in the past so whenever they meet people they have a form of rejection as a pastor you travel to places and you find many people who hate pastors so now are you going to say they hate you no they hate pastors because probably their past with pastors it was not well hallelujah you get to places where people hate to go to church they hate to hear anything about god so first of all understand that people have reasons and personal opinions for the reasons why they are rejecting a, uh, a person it may not be entirely because of you hallelujah now let us learn as god's people to come out of the words and the creations of men and stop making them the reason why we are killing ourselves because all of us here tonight as i speak to you now this evening we have made up our mind and we have made up our heart and we have made up our conscience that we are not liked by people so you begin to hate yourself listen that is why i made us read psalm 94 he said god does not reject his people god so loved the world and god who created you knows every reason behind your being knows every reason behind what you think and what you do so you must understand that the person that is bringing the post the signpost of rejection is not because maybe he entirely hates you but it may be because of their past so don't let those things mm -hmm. become the reason why you kill yourself people also reject things because of the pain they've been through and because of the fact of association you realize that people even try to reject you because they want to belong to a different group and they cannot carry you along listen to me church no matter how men decide to reject you don't be the reason why don't let it be the reason why you also reject yourself hallelujah the point the, the temptation of rejection is that when you are rejected by men you, you don't take care you tend to reject yourself now joseph wanted to form allies and form friendship with his brothers he knew the hatred from the word go because they were from different mothers and the, the problem became escalated because even when they are going to the forest or to go to uh, take the, the the animals to graze to graze on the on the crops or the the, the green uh, wheat his father kept him home the day he was going to feed them with good news and joy the bible said when he was coming his brother said look behold the dreamer is coming let us arise and kill him whenever people reject you they don't make you feel good about yourself but don't ever be in the position where you also hate yourself i'm speaking to somebody here that tonight your heart has been broken tonight your life has been shattered some of us we have brought our life to stand still because we don't even believe any good thing can come out of us but hear me child of god the lord said to my people that out of them shall be the streams of good news out of their life shall be testimonies no matter how they are rejected Amen. by men, I have a plan and a purpose for their lives. And that plan and purpose will cause them to become what I have said they will become. Hallelujah. So Joseph Amen. didn't understand what was happening to him. They said, let's arise and kill him. Now imagine your brothers for no reason. They were even uh, at home with you, eating breakfast with you. The next thing they, they found you around 4 p.m., they feel like killing you. The Bible said, first of all, they said, let's kill him. And Benjamin said, hey, you can't kill our brother. Now they drop him in the, in, the, in the big dungeon. They threw him away and they said, let's bring him out and sell him to the merchandise on their way to, to Egypt. So it became all kinds of things. The other thing is that when people reject you, that's not mean you are not a good product. There are many people who are rejecting you because they cannot cope with the assignment God has given to you. Listen to me, child of God. The Bible said every good and perfect thing comes from the Lord. 
and when god is bringing to you what will occupy you to be what he has said you do he does not just give you anything in your life for some of us here we are fighting to belong to a particular group of people but god said that is not where you're supposed to be you're supposed to be in egypt where you're going to be the next prime minister the, the one who rules and desires for the economy you can't be among these people so if you do understand that principle of isolating yourself for the kingdom agenda i will cause them to reject you i will cause them to add part ways with you and for some of us here the reason why people parted ways with us is because god allowed them to part ways with us because if he does not allow them to take a stand against us we will still remain and become stagnant with their decisions and i'm here to let somebody know that the rejection that you went through the pain that you went through in the books of god it was one of the reasons why he had to allow them to come to you because there was promotion coming to you wherever you are there is a huge promotional door that god has opened for you joseph was going to the land of egypt but he knew my brothers have rejected me but little did he also know that in the plans of god their rejection was for his own good i've come to let somebody know that the rejection that you went through in the plans of god was for your own good hallelujah in the plans of god was for you to be on that seat of authority was for you to be on that place of grace hallelujah rejection gives you so many heart pains but listen to me church Rejection also gives you the time to reflect on your life. Rejection gives you time to reflect on your life. It gives you time to reconsider your decisions and reconsider your choices that you made. For some of us, we make choices out of out of out of um, pressure. We decided to make decisions and decided to form our lives out of pressure. We're hasty to make decisions. And God knows that in our own in our own ways that we came out of um, pressure and everything that we made a decision to form allies and form part of people and things, He knew that wasn't the best thing for us. So now the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is working in your life right now to pinpoint to you the reason why He made you rejected. And for some of us now, if we can go back into time, if you can turn and look into your life, you'll realize that the, some of the rejections that you received in the past were not to kill you, but to make you a better person. The Lord allows the rejection to come for you to reconsider the decisions you made. Amen. We were making decisions out of sympathy. Sometimes you make decisions out of sympathy. There are many people whose life are hanging on the sympathy of other people listen to me uh, child of god your life is not in the hands of any man and i want to repeat that again yes sir life is in the hands of god so why do you carry this glorious life god has given to you and you put all of them in the hands of a person in the hands of someone Mm -hmm. who cannot even control their own lives that's how painful it is and listen to me sometimes you realize that god sits in heaven he sits on his throne and he's like what has happened to my people what has happened to them because we fail to understand that we are royal priesthood we are kings and queens unto our god so when a king unto him a priest unto the lord start to wallow in certain places the lord says you don't deserve to be there you deserve to be on the table of glory and some of us here we are acting like Mephibosheth. we feel our knees are broken we feel we have been broken from bed we have been crippled because of our accent because of our of our color and everything god said listen it does not matter your accent does not matter your color but hear me people said you belong to the kingship and the kingdom and your great grandfather your father was a king so you deserve to sit by the table and eat with david so why are you looking down upon yourself and for someone here tonight the lord sent me to tell you that stop looking down on yourself and accept that you are a royal priesthood accept that you're a new creation accept it some of us are saying that, but God, the color of my skin is not giving me the reason to go. The Lord says, it's not about your skin. Amen. It's about the blood that Amen. was shed on the cross of Calvary. 
That's what he's saying. But God, my education is not allowing me to go. And God says, it's not about your education. It's about the blood that was shed from the Son of God who died and made you a new creation. And all things are passed away. And behold, all things are new. So I said, but Lord, the mistakes Amen. of the nurse who was taking care of me. I said, when the nurse was taking care of Mephibosheth and he heard of the war and the trouble, as he was trying to run, Mephibosheth slipped from his, from his hands and he broke his knee so he could not work anymore. Many times, the mistakes of the past becomes a huge barrier in our lives. But the Bible said, from now, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And I want someone to understand that the fact that you are in Christ Jesus, everything that was fighting you will turn to be in your favor. Anything that has been a scar of pain will turn to be the reason for your elevation. Any reason why you have been in pain, you have been untrodden, you have been cast out will be the reason for God's elevation. Understand that God has a plan for you. People will reject you every time. But the question is, what about the reason why they are rejecting you? Lift up your eyes unto Jesus, the altar and the finisher of your faith. Hallelujah. The, the next point I want to talk about is that rejection is not the end of your life. Hallelujah. Don't ever think that is the end of your life. Many people are going through depression, going through all kinds of pain. Some have also made some vows and they have even cursed themselves. How do you curse yourself, child of God? Why? Because one door was closed. Oh, really? And for information, the greater door is controlled by the king of kings. The door that needs to take you to your destination, the keys of that door are not in the hands of any man. They are in the hands of Christ, who gives us the keys, even of the kingdom. How much more will he not give you the keys and the grace to access that door that was closed? Some doors needed to be closed for you to come back to him. For some of us, for information, we were going our own way. The Bible said there is a way that seems right before men, but the end of that way, on that road, is death for most of us here we were in the company of demons company of people who were going to kill us and scheme us alive so god has to send an intervention to not understand that even when you were rejected that is not the end of your life it's not the end of your story so stop writing the end and concluding on situations for some of us now we concluded on marriage because we were rejected wow all men are the same really all women are the same no woman no cry is a lie the thing is that we make conclusions out of rejections that were not in the plans of god and like i said in the earlier times even if in the hands of god he himself understood why he allowed them to reject you as a man of god you get to a point in your life where the church will reject you the people that God sent you to them, you be rejected. For information, John chapter 1, verse 11, the Bible said he came to his own and his own rejected him. Even Jesus was rejected by his own people. So rejection yeah. comes from many, many people. But that is not the end of the world. Hallelujah. That is not the end of your story. That is not the end of the great things God said you do. Listen to me. Eyes have not seen it and ears have not heard it. And has not entered the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us by his spirit. So it is not the end of the world. It is not the end of your Amen. destiny. So why do you sit down and take time and you cry? Some of us, we've been crying over issues for so long. And God said to Moses, tell my people to move forward and stop crying. So I've come to tell somebody here, move. Because greater are the things ahead of you than the things that you are crying over today. Amen. Amen. Listen to me, yeah. church. You and I do not know tomorrow by our own senses. But his spirit knows tomorrow. Understand that your yes, life is hooked Amen. to the destiny that God says you are. Your life is hooked 
to the to the grace that is taking you to your destination you will get to your destination in the name of jesus you will get to the place of glory in the name of jesus you will get to the place of god's ordination in the name of jesus and no matter what people are saying it is time for you to understand that what matters in your life is what god is saying about you if only church you align your heart unto him and align your ways unto him many times we go through rejections and people just walk out of your life and the truth of the matter is that you are crying but god is rejoicing hallelujah some of us are really bitter about some things that god is saying this is not going to kill you but this is going to be a blessing to you yes it has hurt you but it will help you hallelujah there are many decisions that God expected us to take them in our lives earlier, but we refuse to do it. Sometimes we wait and wait and wait and wait and wait till everything becomes bad and becomes bad and dirty before we tend to make decisions, right? There are some of us here, we are where we are because we fail to act fast according to God's spirit. He spoke to you, gave you discernment, gave you signs, gave you every red sign you need to do every red flag he even gave you blue flags black flags it's a black flag that god gave you but you still didn't see what is keeping us to be stagnant because of our own flesh hallelujah because our own flesh sometimes it's because of our own limited mind i want it this way it must happen that way no it doesn't work that way so now I've come with good news to let somebody know that don't kill yourself. Don't conclude on suicidal Amen. thoughts. Let your heart, Amen. let not your heart be troubled. As you believe in God, also believe that his purpose for your life will come to pass. As you believe that God is the creator of the heavens and the earth, believe that he will take place right now. He will visit you on that sick bed and you come out of everything that is, has held you in bondage. Amen. No. Don't you get yourself of us? You have been broken. Our hearts have been broken by people. We got married to people you trust. And listen, men will only lift you to the level of their strength. And whilst they can't contain you, they drop you and you fall down so hard. They can't take you more than their strength can take you. The Bible said, Curse is the man who put his trust in man. In other words, curse is the man who makes his fellow man is everything. Man cannot be your all in all. He can't be your strength when you are weak. It is only the Spirit of God that can be your strength when you are weak. He can't be the treasure that you seek. He can't be your all in all. The only one that can be your all in all is the Holy Spirit, who is your guarantee of your inheritance. Amen. Some of us, we have. We have become stuck to the misplaced priorities we set the pedestal of our lives to. And the Lord is asking me to tell you tonight that there's a change for you to come back home. Some of us have become prodigal. Others have rejected the gospel. We have rejected Christ. We have rejected, we've been thrown in the towel. We stopped singing in church. Can you imagine? We've stopped singing the lovely song we used to sing every morning. And then as we wake up in the morning, we sing. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fail. Now, because of hurt that has been created in your heart by the reason of your wrong choices, you have stopped singing the songs of praise to the Lord. You have stopped praying. You have stopped giving your love offerings. You have stopped evangelizing. You stop coming to church. You hate everything about church and you even hate God. You feel like you want to die now. But he has sent me all the way from Accra, Ghana to tell you that, listen, the spirit of rejection is not the end of your life. Because even the stone that men think they rejected in the hands of God, it will be a great testimony in your life. Nothing works against a child of God for your information. Nothing is working against you. It is actually working in line with the purposes of God. You don't have to understand the process. 
some of us we we wish we understood everything but god never called you to explain himself to you he just gave you two instructions trust and obey trust and obey amen trust and obey hallelujah trust and obey and the song that I said, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. Trust and obey. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Trust Amen. Him. Why is your heart troubled? Because we have decided to hang our faith on the hooks of doubt of men. We have given things that are not valuable in this world, even to the kingdom of God, valuable places in our lives. And listen to me, we tend to put God out of the realm of priority. And that's why we are hurting ourselves. Amen. I've come to let you know Amen. that if for any reason why tonight you feel like dying, lift your eyes unto Jesus, the altar and the finish of your faith. Amen. Your help does not come from any man. Your help comes from God. Your yes. healing Amen. does not come from any man. But your healing comes from God. The doors that you are trusting Amen. them to be open does not come from any man, but they come from God. Can you lift your Amen. eyes off Amen. the things that you see tonight and lift your eyes unto Jesus? Understand that he died and he resurrected. So victory is our portion. Understand that he died and Amen. the gates of hell could not held him in captive. He came back home, came back your life will be restored in the name of Jesus. Amen. The testimony that has been long Amen. awaited will come in the name of Jesus. You shall sing Amen. the song Amen. of the Lord in the name of Jesus. You shall sing, Amen. this Amen. is my story and this is my song. And I'm praising my God all day long. You shall sing that song with joy. Amen. Because life is not in the hands of any man. The spirit of rejection can be an attack. And I'm closing on that note. It can be an attack of the enemy. Because he, he tends to make everything work against you. He tends to turn people against you. He tends to break things in your life. But listen to me. No matter how the enemy will come, the Bible said the spirit of God shall raise a standard higher than its powers against him. For all the attacks and afflictions Amen. of the Amen. enemy. The Bible said, Who, which among you is afflicted? Let him that is afflicted, let him pray. The only good thing you can Amen. do for yourself today is to go into prayer. Hallelujah. Go into prayer that the Lord Amen. himself, by his grace and mercy, will deal with the spirit of rejection. Go into prayer that the Lord himself will cause there to be a change of testimony, a change of story in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Go into Amen. prayer. We need to wake up, child of God, and go into prayer. Go into prayer. For any one of us here tonight that the enemy has launched an attack of rejection to you, I have come tonight to let you know, as you lift your eyes unto him that won the battles, the Bible said he has been through all that we are going through. But yet he didn't fail. He's the mighty man in battle. Mighty warrior. He's great in battle. He's great in battle. Even if you can understand that phrase tonight, that he's mighty in battle. He's the mighty warrior. Great in battle. If you can understand that tonight, you will know that victory is not far from you. So that I pray that the Lord himself will cause you to walk in the realm of victory over victory and victory Amen. on every side. Amen. Joseph got missing. Amen. He felt like this is the end of my life. I don't know who is feeling that tonight. You feel that it, has, it, it is over. I have come to my wit ends and I cannot do anything. But where you were trying to put a stop, God said, this is the beginning of the story of victory. The Lord said, this one will not end in shame, it will end in glory. It will end in glory because the name of the Lord cannot end in shame. The Lord, name of the Lord will end in glory. It's the beginning of a new testimony. You are about to see the hand of God in different dimensions. Yes, you are rejected of men, but God has not rejected you. 
it's actually to tell you that this is the time for you to shake yourself rejoice for the lord your god is as visited you what were the stories that were people were saying about sarah hey they were giving her all kinds of things people were giving her reasons why she should give up and cry listen people would always tell you something and people will talk for information people are meant to talk they will keep on saying in fact the things they will say are very hurtful they they use all kinds of things around you to be elements to hurt you to be element to kill you to be element to destroy your life and they find means to make you a bigger person but the good thing is that whenever he that puts his trust in the lord he will never fail you Amen. He will never fail. Amen. Your testimony will be yeah. that of what the whole world will see that exactly. this one is the doing of the Lord. And it's marvelous in our eyes. Let them keep on throwing Amen. their things at you. But as for you, you are built on the solid rock of Christ. And whether the rain falls or the sun Amen. is shining, nothing can be. You are immovable. You cannot be moved from where you have been placed. So now I pray that the power of God will Amen. cause you to break every bondage of rejection in your life. To make you Amen. come to the place of oh, new Lord. creation. Old things are passed away. Amen. And behold, all things are new. I pray that tonight you walk in the grace of God that brings man to the place of glory and testimony. The doors have been shut. The Amen. things that you have been praying for, sometimes you look like where you are. There's no way. Hey. But God will make a way where there seems to be no way. No way. Amen. He will make a way for your children. Amen. He will make a way for your your spouse. Amen. He will make a way for your family. And God will preserve you. Amen. So that I I leave you in the hands of the Holy Spirit. That He will cause you to be fruitful on every side. And give you the grace to come out of frustrations and rejection. And be a testimony wherever Amen. you go to. The Lord bless you and keep Amen. you and cause his face to shine upon you. Amen. And be Amen. gracious unto Amen. you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.